What is up guys, Technicals here. Today we're gonna be building a CPU mining rig. CPU mining, very profitable right now, very easy to get started. It's basically building a computer. We're gonna go over the parts included, go over the configuration, and go over how to get started mining. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, more CPU mining content like this, and check the description below for links to everything we go over here today, including links to Amazon where you can buy all the parts. The base of this build is going to be the Ryzen 9 7950 X3D, one of the best CPUs that you can get for the consumer grade. We're pairing that with 32 gigabytes of DDR5. I'm going to be using this cooler that fits the AM5 socket, although there is a link in the description below over to a cooler that's just about $30 over on Amazon that I use for all my other CPU rigs. It works great. That goes for the power supply as well. CPU miners rarely pull over 200 watts, so you don't need a very big power supply to push them. I'm going to be using this 1000 watt power supply because I just had it as a spare. We're going to be putting it all on this Gigabyte B650M motherboard because I use this motherboard for some of my other CPU miners and it works great. Finally, we're going to be putting it on one of my custom designed CPU stands. Now, this is what I use for all my CPU mining rigs. It fits the power supply underneath neatly, and it has a customizable faceplate on the front. If you're interested in buying one of these, I do sell them on my Etsy, link in the description below. You don't need this stand. You can put it on anything that accepts a motherboard and holds a motherboard in place. There are plenty of free designs as well that you can 3D print for yourself. Additionally, you will need a hard drive of some kind. I like using these little NVMEs because they fit neatly onto the motherboard. You don't have to run any cables to them, but you can use an SSD attached with the SATA cable if you prefer. And since we're going to be using HiveOS for this build, you could also use a USB drive just to make it cheaper and easier. So let's get started. If you've built a PC before, it's basically the same exact process just on a different frame and it's being built for a different purpose. First thing I like to do is pop in the power supply because it makes everything after that easier. Afterward, I go ahead and crack open the motherboard, take it out of the plastic, and go ahead and put it on the stand. Now before I do anything else, I want to update the BIOS. You don't need to install anything in order to update these Gigabyte BIOSes. Now every motherboard is different, but this Gigabyte board allows me to do QFlash, which is basically loading an updated copy of the BIOS onto a USB drive and pressing a button to update it. You don't need to install the CPU, RAM, or anything else. Just connect the motherboard power cable and the CPU power cable. I'm gonna head over to Gigabyte's website, download the latest BIOS, and per their instructions, load it onto a USB drive, change the name. I'm gonna put it in the dedicated USB port for BIOS flashing, and I'm gonna press the button. This process will take five to 10 minutes, but it's going to update your BIOS to the latest version. While that's working, let's go ahead and flash a copy of Hive OS onto our hard drive. Now I'm going to be using this NVMe drive, but you can do this with a USB drive or an SSD. The process is much the same. Head over to Hive's website and download the latest version. If you're running a Ryzen 7000 series, you're going to have to use the beta version of Hive in order to get your temperatures. But if you're running something else, you can just download and install the latest version. I really like using this NVMe flashing tool because I can put it in, connect it to my computer via USB, and flash it very easily. I'm going to open up my flashing program, select Hive OS, select the drive, and flash. Oh good, our motherboard's done updating the BIOS. We can remove the drive and turn off the power. I'll also disconnect the power cables until I'm ready to connect them again. Now let's take out our CPU. Again, this is a 7950X3D. Very powerful, very efficient, very good at CPU mining. We'll go ahead and pop open the housing, take out our CPU, and put it in place. Be sure that it's oriented correctly. Press down on the lever and the top plate will pop off. Now we're going to go ahead and install our NVMe now that it's done flashing. I like to do this because sometimes it's hard to get to, depending on the motherboard. Next, depending on the type of cooler that you get, it may want you to leave on the brackets that come with the motherboard or take them off. Next, I'm going to apply thermal paste to the CPU. There's a lot of schools of thought on how to do this, so you may check YouTube on different ways to do it. I like to put it on and spread it all around. Screw down our cooling tower per the instructions. 
and go ahead and install our RAM. Be sure that you're installing the RAM in the correct slots. Usually the motherboard will tell you which slots to occupy first. We'll install and then connect the fans to the cooler. That looks pretty good to me. Let's move on to the next step. To configure this rig, I'm going to be using my Highway 11-inch security monitor. USB powered, HDMI out. It's great for configuring rigs or troubleshooting on the go. Link in the description below. We're going to power on the system and press the delete key over and over again to enter the BIOS. There are a few core settings that you want to do for any CPU miner. The settings will be in different places depending on your motherboard's manufacturer. The first is going to be restore on AC power loss. That way if you lose power and it comes back on, the CPU miner will come back on automatically. I'm going to go through my settings for this 7950X3D, although I highly suggest you check out Rabid Mining's channel. He's the kingpin of CPU mining and has several videos for different processors and different motherboards on the different BIOS settings for CPU mining. I'm basically specking mine out per his instructions to mine on Random X. Because if I switch back and forth from Random X to something else, I want to make sure that I'm highly tuned to mine Random X the most efficiently because most profitable coins are on Random X. This includes enabling XMP profile so our memory will operate at its maximum advertised speed. Most other processors would call for you to lower the voltage on the core to keep your temperatures down and possibly do an overclock. For the 7950X3D, we leave the base clock in place and we can't adjust the voltage down, but we can play with the precision boost overdrive. I'm going to move my precision boost overdrive curve optimizer down to a negative offset on all cores of 30. If this is too much, you can back off and go down. 25, 20, 15, etc. Finally, I'm going to enable eco mode. It will greatly reduce the amount of power that the rig is pulling. If you build a CPU mining rig of your own, I suggest you play with these settings a little bit to see where the sweet spot is in terms of power used and hash rate achieved. Now for the purposes of this guide, I'm going to be using Hive OS. Now you could run your CPU mining rig on Windows and mine on NiceHash or any individual coins via the mining programs that you download and run on Windows itself. But I like using Hive OS because I like keeping everything in one place where I can see everything, manage everything, and monitor everything. If you're interested in using Hive OS, I have a link in the description below. Once your drive is done flashing, disconnect it from the machine you flashed it from, and then plug it right back in. Once you're in Hive OS, go to the top and create a new worker. You're going to connect an existing, and then once you're greeted with this page, you're going to see the rig.conf file. Click to download that rig.conf. Then, in the drive you reconnected, just simply copy and paste the rig.conf file into the drive. This is how the rig is going to know that it belongs to your Hive account and once you connect it and get it online, it will come up in your window. From here, it's simply a matter of setting up for the different coins that you want to mine. Check my channel or other mining channels on YouTube for guides on how to mine those various coins. If you're just starting out, I recommend doing something like NiceHash, something that's very easy to get started with, gives you your payouts at a regular interval, and is easy to cash out from. If you like this video or the simplicity of this guide, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and if you want more beginner-style videos, please let me know in the comments below. Once again, check the description for links to everything we talked about here today if you want to buy any of this stuff on Amazon. Also, check out some of the other mining channels for more detailed guides on how to get started with mining. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.